I'm okay. talking to my partner. Why get the f off me, it? bro. No. Get the. No, I'm no, asking no. you to get the f off me. No. Turn around. Get Turn off here. me, dude. She's been drinking. Turn the f around. No. We're done playing. No. I'm not playing with you. Get the f off Ellie. me, dude. Have you ever wondered how to turn your dream of becoming a police officer into a nightmare? Curious about the surefire ways to sabotage your chances in law enforcement? What if we told you that there are key actions that could dash your aspirations? In today's video, we are going to explore what not to do on your journey to becoming a police officer. So stay tuned and watch this video till end. On November 18th, 2023, in Ohio, the atmosphere surrounding a police station underwent an unexpected transformation. An on-duty officer, concluding his shift, found himself thrust into the midst of a tumultuous scene unfolding in the station's parking lot. Two women were engaged in a heated argument, prompting the officer to intervene and attempt to restore order. The officer's immediate challenge was deciphering the chaotic situation before him. What's going on? What's going on? He urgently inquired, attempting to quell the escalating tension. The women, deeply entrenched in their dispute, appeared undeterred by the officer's presence. His efforts to bring calm were met with resistance, with both women seemingly unwilling to de-escalate the situation. As the officer focused on one of the women, it became evident that her agitation was particularly pronounced. Despite the officer's attempts to reason with her, she vehemently resisted his commands. The exchange grew increasingly intense, with the officer instructing her to step back and cease her disruptive behavior. This is my partner. I'm asking you to stop. What's going on? What's going on? Stop! Stop! Get the don't touch me, please. Let go of the f door. Excuse me? What are you doing? This is my partner. I'm asking you to okay, stop. Okay, and I'm telling you to stop. I have a rifle law. I'm asking you to stop touching me. Stop. Please get your hand off me. Then step back This from is the car. my partner. I'm asking you to stop touching me. Look at me. Step back. Have a right. You don't have a right to be ripping out doors in front of the cops. This is my partner. You're, I don't care who it is. Chicken. Step back. Did I give a f about you having a badge, bro? Go ahead. You want I'm me to asking you, him? I don't give a f Okay. I'm asking you to stay, take a step back. Put your back. arms behind your back. No. no. Put your arms Wait. behind your back. No. No. Put your arms Wait. behind your back. No. Let go. And arrest? Yes. Why? Disorderly conduct. Put your arms it's behind your back. It's a lie. The woman insisted, her tone defiant. The officer, attempting to establish control, reiterated the need for her to step back. The exchange grew more intense, with the woman challenging the officer's authority emphasizing that she didn't care about his badge. The officer, undeterred, issued clear commands for the woman to put her arms behind her back, indicating that she was under arrest for disorderly conduct. This declaration was met with vehement denial and accusations of falsehood from the woman. Hey, get the f off me, bro! Ah, no. Get the no, I'm asking you to get the f off around. me! No! Turn around! Get Turn off, off me, dude! Turn the f around. No. We're done playing. No. I'm not playing with you. Get the f off Ellie! me, dude. Get off me. I'm asking me. Get the f off me. What are we doing right now? Put your hands behind the bed. Wait, guys. No, we're past that. We are past that. Put Wait, your hands. You've been drinking. Wait, stop. No argument. Who adamantly protested against the impending arrest. As the officer attempted to handcuff her, the woman's resistance intensified. She insisted on having the handcuffs placed in front, a request that the officer firmly rejected. The struggle continued, with the woman expressing her displeasure at the arrest, stating that it was based on false charges. Throughout the altercation, it became apparent that the woman had been drinking. The officer, aware of her intoxicated state, urged her to turn around, emphasizing the seriousness of the situation. Despite the officer's attempts to bring the situation under control, the woman persisted in resisting arrest. 
The woman's defiance reached a point where she threatened to make the arrest difficult and asserted her determination to contest the charges in court. The officer, maintaining composure, proceeded with the arrest, signaling the potential for a challenging legal process ahead. Fuck you. No, you! This is Chase, your fault, not mine! And you, you strap. Can you just drop my phone? Yeah, and I'm letting everybody know you're f***ing getting arrested because you wanted a f***ing drink you and you wanted to act a fool. I'm Go sit in the car and we'll talk to you in a minute. Why do you gotta make shit hard? I'm trying to talk to you, see what was going on, and you made shit hard. Sit down on the f***ing curb. Don't, don't talk to me like that! Do you, you want to get out of the car? Get in the car. You're under arrest. As the woman was escorted to a police vehicle, she continued to express her discontent, blaming the situation on the officer and accusing him of making the arrest solely because she had been drinking. Her attempts to deflect responsibility and challenge the legitimacy of the arrest highlighted a lack of accountability. Get my wrist together! Sit down and get... I, I will! I Can you keep let me get my wrist together? Just hold on, hold on, we're conducting this. You're not telling right. us what's going on. Once inside the police vehicle, the woman's frustration spilled over, directed towards her partner, who had been recording the incident. The officer, now faced with an uncooperative individual, navigated the challenges of maintaining control and ensuring a safe transport to the police station. And ask him if you could put the handcuffs in the front, it's not a big deal man being an asshole for what you want somebody to cooperate with you want to you cooperate with me bro i'm telling you i'm about to make a problem bro officer hey bro bro i'm, I'm telling you i'm gonna raise hell in this upon arrival at the station the woman's agitation persisted her accusations and attempts to justify her actions painted a picture of someone unwilling to acknowledge the consequences of their behavior. Hey, stop kicking the door! The officer, tasked with processing the arrest, faced additional complications as the woman insisted on specific accommodations, such as having the handcuffs placed in the front. The unfolding events, marked by resistance, verbal aggression, and defiance, raised significant concerns about the woman's suitability for a role in law enforcement. Her inability to handle stress, cooperate with lawful orders, and take accountability for her actions underscored potential shortcomings in her character. In evaluating whether the woman should still be considered fit for a role as a police officer, the incident provided a stark illustration of the challenges posed by her behavior. Her confrontational attitude, intoxicated state, and refusal to adhere to lawful commands raised doubts about her ability to uphold the principles of law enforcement with professionalism and integrity. I promise you I'm gonna make y'all I'm gonna make y'all live in hell. Try me! Come on! Come on, three y'all! Cause y'all the incident emphasized the importance of evaluating not only the actions, but also the character of individuals aspiring to become police officers. The woman's behavior, indicative of impulsivity, aggression, and a lack of accountability, raised red flags that would warrant careful consideration by law enforcement agencies in assessing her suitability for the profession. Moving forward, the woman's arrest unfolded with more complexities as she insisted on her rights and contested the charges against her. Despite admitting to intoxication while operating her girlfriend's car in the parking lot, she remarkably avoided a DUI charge in this incident. This decision raises questions about the legal handling of individuals in similar circumstances. In reviewing the events that transpired on that fateful night, it's imperative to consider the broader implications for the woman's potential career in law enforcement. What are you? Go. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Rollerson. Oh, so you're an asshole. Yep. Stop touching me like Go that. Go down there to the I fucking will cooperate, circle. but don't... You are not... Go. You're not going to get cooperation on me if you touch me like that, bro. I'm trying to tell you, be easy. Goddamn. Her conduct from the initial confrontation 
to the post-arrest interactions showcased a pattern of behavior that may be incompatible with the responsibilities and expectations placed on police officers. First and foremost, the woman's inability to handle a disagreement without resorting to a heated argument raises concerns about her conflict resolution skills. Law enforcement officers often find themselves in tense situations where effective communication and de-escalation are crucial. In this instance, the woman's confrontational approach may have exacerbated the situation rather than diffused it. Furthermore, her refusal to comply with lawful orders and the subsequent attempt to manipulate the arrest process by demanding specific accommodations, such as having the handcuffs placed in the front, highlights potential issues with authority and adherence to protocol. Do we get us out ready? Yeah, just get a girl to the surgeon and then put her in the I got a lot of it up with this phone. Police officers must demonstrate a willingness to follow procedures and respect the chain of command, essential qualities for maintaining order and public trust. The woman's intoxicated state during the incident raises questions about her judgment and decision-making capabilities. Law enforcement officers are entrusted with upholding the law and ensuring public safety, responsibilities that demand sound judgment, especially in high-pressure situations. Intoxication, as displayed in this case, can compromise an officer's ability to make sound decisions, potentially jeopardizing the safety of both the officer and the public. While the woman's partner recorded the incident, it is essential to address the potential impact of such behavior on public perception and trust in law enforcement. The woman's verbal outbursts, defiance and threats may contribute to a negative perception of police officers, eroding the community's trust in the very individuals tasked with ensuring their safety. She wanted to go out and drink. She was texting people off of my phone. I came here to get out of my house because she's been drinking. She asked me where I was. I told her the police station. She, I seen her pull in and she thought I was at somebody's house. The legal handling of the situation, particularly the absence of a DUI charge despite the admission of intoxication, raises questions about the consistency and fairness of law enforcement practices. This aspect should prompt a thorough review of the decision-making process and considerations that led to the specific charges filed in this case. In considering the woman's suitability for a role in law enforcement, it is crucial to weigh the demonstrated behavior against the core values and expectations of the profession. Law enforcement agencies typically seek individuals with integrity, professionalism, sound judgment, and the ability to handle stressful situations effectively. The woman's conduct in this incident raises legitimate concerns about her alignment with these essential qualities. In short, this event painted a vivid picture of a challenging encounter between law enforcement and an individual with aspirations to join the ranks of the police force. Six to eight hours. She has to sober up unless there's, but can I, I think she's going to fight with us in jail. Then she'll be here for eight hours. The woman's behavior, marked by defiance, verbal aggression, and intoxication, raises legitimate questions about her suitability for a role in law enforcement. Ultimately, the incident prompts a critical examination of the recruitment, training, and evaluation processes within law enforcement agencies to ensure that individuals selected for these roles possess the necessary qualities to serve and protect their communities effectively. Have you encountered similar stories, or do you have advice for those aspiring to become police officers? Let me know in the comment section below, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, then please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.